last week in the mail, I got a surprise thanks to Nick VK2DAP. It's a Chinese antenna coupler, basically a T-match in conjunction with a resistive antenna bridge. It claims to operate from 1 to 30 megahertz, so it could potentially be useful for the portable QRP app. Available for a low price, it's been fairly popular and there's a lot of builder reports on the web. You'll find out why in a moment. In this video, I'll talk about its assembly and give it an on-air test. This is what you get. Even metal threads, so it looks like a top quality box, even sealed. The parts, a couple of plastic type tuning capacitors, rotary switch, BNC, toyed, circuit board and LED. You will need to do a fair bit of work to assemble the kit. The holes are not drilled in the case for the controls. A sticker for the front panel. But a nice touch is these drilling labels. Now there are no instructions so I'll jump online and see what I can find. Looking at the specifications, it says it can handle 20 watts when it's tuned up, but personally I wouldn't put any more than 5 given the small tuning capacitors. There's an LED display, 1 to 30 megahertz. Well, we'll find out later when we see if it works on 160 meters or not. You can download the instructions, but before we'll do, we'll just look at the circuit diagram. It's not an L-match or a Pi network, but a T-match. But I suppose if you wanted to, you could just configure it and make it a Pi network. And on the left, we've got some circuitry here. Looks like a little resistive bridge. And if you want to tune up, you just flick the switch so the bridge is switched in. And then you tune for a null in its brightness. And so there's a step-by-step -step guide also showing pictures at various stages. From the start, you could tell that this kit was going to be pretty crusty, as Dave Jones would say. You know, pretty crusty, it's like, forget it. The English in the instructions is appalling. The hole spacing in the circuit board doesn't always match the length of the supplied components. The circuit diagram is not appropriately annotated, like R1, R2, R3, etc. And also, if you look carefully, the arrangement of components on the circuit board is not the same as that pictured. Oh, and look at the size of the holes in the circuit board versus the thickness of the component leads. Definitely makes a bit harder to solder, unless you've got it on your table. Otherwise, the bits will just fall out. Anyway, we'll plug in the soldering iron and give this a go. These drilling location maps are a bit of an IQ test. They're basically stickers that you have to put on certain spots on the box. A look at the circuit of the resistive bridge in a bit more detail. Two turns on this side, on the transmitter side, and five turns on the LED side. That ratio provides a step up in voltage, allowing the LED to light when the antenna is mismatched. The markings on the board are wrong. It should be 5 turn on this side and 2 turn on this side. There's two main things to be mindful when soldering to the switch. First of all, you can't have too much wire between the toroid and the switch, otherwise it will stick out too much. Secondly, good connections are a mixture of not applying too much or too little heat. Too little heat will result in a poor connection, and too much heat could result in the switch being melted. It's also important to use a knife to strip back the enamel to ensure good contact and take up of solder. Drilling holes for the controls. But there's one big problem. Can you spot what it is? 
there's no way the variable capacitor can attach to this unless you shear back this standoff. Just use wire cutters and sandpaper to make it flush. Oh, and don't trust the panel marking. As you can see, the spigot on the switch doesn't quite line up with the marking on the panel for the hole that's supposed to hold it in. You have to deliberately drill it off centre. If you want to make adjustments, then you'll need to remember to bring a pair of tweezers with you. Or, provided you're not a nail biter, you can adjust the variable capacitor shaft without the knob. On the bright side, the template for the holes for the variable capacitor seem to be spot on. One thing about this kit is it comes with labels that you stick on so that you've got templates to drill holes. However, it doesn't tell you which way the labels go. So the result can be something like this. Your variable capacitor is in here and there's not enough clearance for the transmitter socket. Yep, the label should have been the other way. If the socket was up here, then it wouldn't have been a problem. This is the completed antenna coupler. It came with B and C sockets, both for the transmitter and the antenna side, but I replaced them with binding posts for easier connection to wire antennas. Let's go portable, put it on air and see how it works. To tune up your applier carrier, you have the switch in the left position and you adjust so that the LED is extinguished. Because there are no knobs, this is harder because of the extra capacitance contributed by the pliers. About 20 meters of wire as an antenna and fed, I was able to get the antenna coupler to tune up on all bands from 3.5 to 28 megahertz. CQ, CQ, VK2, Quebec Alpha. We've got VK3 right in there, VK3 again, the FA. Uh, go ahead, Adam. Thanks for the five and five. Are you a little bit scratchy? I'll give you a four by five, four by five. And my flagpole number for you is uh, 44, number 44 there, uh, Peter, have it. Even though there's only a few parts, this kit is actually quite difficult to put together. I certainly wouldn't recommend it for the beginner. There's several reasons for that, including shonky instructions, errors on the printed circuit board, bits that don't fit together, and much more. The low price is attractive, but consider it as a cheap way of getting the required components to put together an antenna coupler. You're better off building it from scratch and ignoring the kit instructions such as they are. If you do decide to buy this kit, make sure you read other people's construction experiences. That will save you a lot of time. Thanks again to Nick VK2DAP for the opportunity to review this coupler. Now here's a special offer. As you know, I've got plenty of antenna couplers and I didn't really need this one. If you are an Australian based viewer, then let me know in 200 words or less how you'd use this antenna coupler if you had it. Just send an email to vk3ye at qsl.net. That's vk3ye at qsl.net. And let me know how you'd use this antenna coupler. If you want to get the most from Amateur Radio, check out my ebooks Minimum QRP, Hand Carried QRP Antennas, and Getting Back into Amateur Radio. All have been favourably reviewed, and you can get them for a low price in electronic form. Visit my website, vk3ye.com, and follow the links 
or search their titles in Amazon. You can also like the VK3YE Radio Books page on Facebook. The books are available in electronic form and in some countries in paperback as well.